which is essentially, have we learned anything from the last energy crisis, uh, the impact it has on inflation directly and indirectly, and would we apply the same approach? This is work that is ongoing and that we will continue to do. But it's clear to us that it applies to a completely different economy today, and an economy which uh, has had an episode of very high inflation, an economy where the interest rates it at a very high level of 4%, and um, an economy that has strong employment and which is weakening. So we have to take all these factors into account to see how possible higher cost of energy would actually affect both GDP and inflation. And it's in the context of that assessment that we would respond accordingly. But be under no doubt, our determination is intact and our determination to bring inflation to 2% in the medium term is absolutely um, the same, if not reinforced by the proximity of the destination. Um, your first question was the... Strong transmission of... Oh, yeah, 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 of course. So you... What we are seeing is a very strong transmission um, of our monetary policy in the banking sector in particular. And the financing of the economy as a result is directly affected, which in turn uh, plays onto the reduction of inflation and the dampening of demand. And, and those numbers are really, uh, you, you have seen the bank lending survey, I'm sure, and, and they are very uh, striking in terms of both volume and, and rate uh, transmission. We know that there is still more to come. So as is often the case with uh, monetary policy, there is this uh, transmission lag time. The assessment by our staff is that there is still uh, more in the pipeline and more to come to affect the real economy. And uh, the assumption is that it will continue to unfold throughout the end of 23 and first quarter of 24. Now, one might argue that it's going to last longer, but the, the, we have already seen a significant uh, transmission to the financing conditions. More is to come. And if you look at, for instance, the housing sector, it's pretty obvious that there is transmission to the real economy. If you look at the volume of um, capital expenditure of investment by corporates, there is a reduction. It's not just the banks telling us that they will be more attentive to the risk and that they are reducing their, their flow of credit. It's also the corporates uh, that are putting a break on their investment because of the level of interest rates. That clearly results from the various corporate telephone surveys that we conduct and from the, uh, the bank lending survey as well. So both in the housing sector and in the investment uh, numbers that we have, it's, it's, it is transmitting to the real economy. Thank you.